Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. In this video, I'm going to be talking about scuba basics. And I mean scuba basic equipment. I do a lot of videos about things like dive computers, but I had a subscriber ask me a question and say, Bob, I need to know more about consoles. So I'm going to do two videos. The first video is going to be about basic consoles. And then I'm going to do a second video about consoles that include computers. And I think you'll find this interesting. A lot of people wonder what they should buy. And so I'm going to try to give you a little pros and cons about what I've got in front of me here. And I've got some kind of mixed brands, so I didn't necessarily go with just one brand. I just went out to the sales floor, took these off the display, and uh, said, well, I think these will work. And what I've got here is I've got a single gauge, I've got a double gauge, I've got a triple gauge, I've got a single gauge with, with a compass, and then I've got a digital depth and pressure gauge. And I'm not talking about integrated, not talking about a computer, but an actual digital pressure depth gauge. Now, uh, it's quite interesting that when people start picking out equipment, uh, and most of the folks out there, the you viewers and such, and especially the subscribers, know how big I am about risk computers. But there's a lot of shops out there that they only rent consoles and then they rent you a separate computer or they do console with computer because they're less likely for somebody to, to actually lose a dive computer if it's included in the console. So there's some very basic similarities as far as what the consoles do, but let's kind of talk about what we've got right here. First, what I've got, this is a single gauge console, and this single gauge console is by Aqualung, and it is strictly a pressure gauge. Now, many of the pressure gauges may have a temperature gauge on it. It may be just a straight pressure gauge. Now, one of the things that I like about consoles is that they include some kind of an attachment point, like you see right here on this, pre this single pressure gauge, so that you can put a leash from the console to your BC. There's nothing I personally hate worse than seeing a diver swimming along and their gauge is flopping behind them or their octo is flopping behind them. That's just, you know, it's just wrong. And of course, when you're dragging your equipment, if you're on a, a reef or something, then likely you're damaging the reef and possibly damaging your equipment. So there's no advantage to not having some kind of a connection. And when I talk about connections, some people use a leash. I, I, again, I tend to call it a leash. Some people uh, will put a snap clip and what they call clip off the console. For me, again, I'm not really big on that because a lot of divers have trouble just necessarily finding their console and trying to find it, unclip it to look at it and then reclip it um, becomes kind of a big deal. And so why not just have a bungee leash on it? You put your hand on it, you pull it out, you look at it, and then you let go of it and it just returns to where it's supposed to be. What could be simpler than that? But a lot of the techie types out there, they want it tucked in so that they don't have any possibility of a snag or a drag or something like that. And that's fine. That's fine. As long as it's, you know, attached and under control is what makes it so important. The next one, what this is, is this is a pressure and depth gauge. 
and this one is by Apex. You're going to see some slight differences in the way the numbers are on there. Some of them uh, that you're going to see have uh, imperial and uh, metric, or you can get straight imperial or straight metric, depending where you are out there. I just got an email from a gentleman in France. I tend to talk back and forth with folks in the UK, in Germany, uh, Malaysia, uh, China, different places that people watch the Diver Supply Channel videos. Uh, they're just all over the world and, and I love getting comments. And if you don't speak English, that's okay. Send it to me in your language. I'll get it translated and I'll try to reply back in your language if you, you know, if you'd like to send me a question or a, a comment. I, I really appreciate all the comments. What you see here is, again, you see our depth gauge and the depth gauge is normally on the top, like what we see here. And the pressure gauge is on the bottom because we've got a hose. And so when the hose comes into the console, it should come into the pressure gauge. And of course, this one is just strictly uh, a pressure gauge and a depth gauge. A lot of times people will say, so Bob, what, what is the, the red hand that's on the uh, depth gauge? Well, what it is, is it is a lever with a little arm sticking up. And as you go deeper and your indicator moves around, it drags that little orange hand with it. And it, if and when um, you hit your deepest point, then it will begin to back off. Because remember, uh, dive... You know, our dive tables are based on max depth, max time, whereas your dive computers know exactly where you were in your dive profile, and you know it will always indicate your deepest depth also, but it will actually, most of the computers will actually show you today your dive profile and such. But so before those computers were out there, the orange hand to indicate your max depth was important because, hey, we dove with a pressure gauge, a depth gauge, and a dive watch. And a lot of you see the dive watches that I wear. I'm, I've always worn one and I, I just, it's what I do. And I enjoy some of the different dive watches that are out there. But you also see a connection point. This one's got connection points on both sides so that if you want to hang the gauge so that it is facing your BC here, then that's fine too. If you want to face it away and then pull it around and look at it, that works also. So that's why it's got two there. So that's a, uh, a two gauge console. Then, this gauge right here, you're going to notice it's a different color. This one's black, and this is actually a three gauge. So you've got two gauges on this side, our pressure gauge and our depth gauge. And then back here, we've got a compass. And some people uh, like compasses on their wrist. Some people like a, a compass on a retractor. It, you know, some people like Pepsi and some people like Coca-Cola. It's just whatever is your thing. So um, personally, you know, I think it's good to have a compass. Uh, in some cases, you're not necessarily needing a compass, but if you've got it and you need it in that situation, it's on your on your console there. So. You know, it's kind of up to you what your preferences are as far as the compass goes. So, and of course, this one has uh, the two attachment points. And like I said, you can see this one's black. And so why would we use black? So the main reason we would use black is if you're in, say, an overhead environment of some time, maybe you go into a wreck or and again, if you're not trained to go into a wreck, you're not trained to go in a cavern or a cave, don't go there. If you're using one of these, 
maybe you're night diving, and you shine a flashlight on this, well, what stands out are the, the letters and the information that's important to you. Whereas with a white face, you shine a flashlight on it, then you tend to get that glare back in your face when you use a, a white gauge. In addition, this is actually what we call global. And global means the indicators here are both in metric and in imperial. So it, it doesn't matter where or who uses this, you've got the ability to you know, deal with metric or, or um, imperial. Okay, so let's move into something that's a little bit more specialized. And this one's by Scuba Pro, and I'm gonna hold it down here. And what you're gonna see is we've got a pressure gauge and we got a compass, but there's no depth gauge here. And this is kinda like our first one and that doesn't have anything but a pressure. So we only have pressure, but we have the compass. So if you're using a wrist computer, then this would be an effective tool to utilize um, maybe your computer doesn't have a compass on it. Many of the computers out there today have built-in compasses. So this one that has the compass mounted on the end, and you can see the attachment point is right here on the end. Sometimes people will attach a clip down here on the hose. I'm not really big on those because what happens is now the hose tends to and the clip and the hose tends to slide through the clip and now you've still got a dangling gauge. So for me, I would, you know, use a leash that attaches to the gauge, attaches to your BC. A little bit more specialized, and I did a video on this particular unit. I'm gonna put a link up there and I'm also going to put a link down in the description, and there'll be links in the description to, to all of these. This is Cressy's Digi 2. Now, it's got a cover on it that's magnetic, and when I pull it off, it's going to come on, and I think you can see that if I get a nice close-up. Very easy to read, and what's interesting about this because today most of us are used to looking at our cells, cell phones or something digital, and we're not used to looking at something analog per se, unless you wear a watch and, you know, even at home a lot of people don't look at clocks anymore. They just look at their cell phone and it's on there digitally. Well, what's on here is a digital readout that gives us depth, and it gives us tank pressure. And it has a few more interesting factors to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, go to that video and see what all those cool features are that this particular uh, unit does that some of these others don't do. And it kinda leads us into that next video that's going to be talking about uh, our uh, consoles and with computers embedded. And some of those are going to be air integrated computers. Some of those are going to be separate computers. I think you'll find that particular video interesting uh, as well, hopefully, as you found this one. If you're new here, please do me a favor, reach down, hit that subscribe button, and I'd really like to hit that 10,000 mark by Christmas. And like I always say, use a gauge, dive safe out there. Thanks for watching.